Good morning, everybody. I've asked Jonathan and Abigail here to help me with today's Sunday School lesson. We hope that you enjoy doing it with us. Now, before we start, we need you to go and get three things. Um, so we're going to need three mats. Maybe your mom's already got them for you. But if not, you can just pause the video after I've explained and then you can go and fetch these things. So what you're going to need is a small mat or even just draw a small circle on the, on the floor with a piece of chalk. And then you're going to need a slightly bigger one, a medium sized one. And then you're going to need a nice big one. Maybe use a nice big blanket or a picnic blanket, something bright and fun and beautiful. So I'm going to ask Addie and John to quickly go behind me and set up this mat for me. I don't know if you remember, but two weeks ago we were talking about a very special someone named David. And he was the youngest in his family. And a prophet named Samuel came along and anointed him as king. And our verse was that God looks on the inside, not on the outside. So we're going to start now by climbing onto this first mat of ours. I think we can all squeeze on. Oh, oh we're only going to have two of us on here. John doesn't fit. Hey, <laughs> is this a good mat to be on? <laughs> no. No. It's not a very special mat either, is it? No. A bit grubby and old. Hey? And a bit squishy. A bit squishy and a bit tiny. Yeah. So if we remember, David was the smallest of his eight brothers. And he was not thought of as very important at all in his family. In fact, while his other big, strong brothers went off to fight in a big war, David was left at home to um, look after the sheep. But God knew that David was going to have a much more important role in his life. And that this was part of what God was doing to get him ready. David was looking after the sheep. He was looking after learning how to care for other animals and how to look after them and fight off lions and bears it even says and David spent lots of time out in the fields with the sheep singing praises to God and writing songs to God and praying so it was an important part of David's growth should we move on to the next mat so this is mat number two and we've got Jonathan back here with us okay and this mat's quite a bit bigger, isn't it, Ariel? Yes. It's a much nicer mat, and it's much more comfortable to sit on. God was helping David to grow. And he was growing him with the amount of responsibilities and the amount of things he was supposed to do. And so one day, David's dad asked him to take a whole big package of food out to his brothers who were soldiers in the war. And David went all along to the battlefield um, with all this food. And when he got there, he heard a big giant Goliath shouting insults against God and against all the Israelite people. And we know the story of David and Goliath. Even if you don't, I suggest that you go to 1 Samuel 17 verse 1 and read all the way on to 1 Samuel 18 verse 5 in your Bible. Or, and you will be able to watch the story of David and Goliath. But God helped David to defeat Goliath. And so the Israelites defeated all of the Philistines. And there was a big celebration. Our lesson isn't done though at the end of David growing and learning new responsibilities. It gets even bigger. Can you two get the biggest mat for us? Okay. So how's this for a mat? Hey? What color is it, Abby? It's silver and gold. And it's nice and big? Yes. And John, is it comfy? Do you want a pillow? Yes. Yeah. Okay. This is our third and biggest mat. And maybe you've just got circles on the floor, but this you should be climbing into your biggest circle or onto your biggest mat. David wasn't done growing and God still had big special plans for him. This mat represents the 
palace of the king. Now David wasn't king yet, but King Saul invited David to come back to the palace with him and he threw a big celebration party. And David met someone very special at this time at the palace. Do you know who it was, Joe? Jonathan. Jonathan. Jonathan became David's best friend. And God used Jonathan and David's friendship to help them grow. So let's take a quiet moment now and think about what we learned about how God helped David to grow. David didn't grow up all at once in one go. And he wasn't born big and important and doing the things that God taught him to do. He grew little bit by little bit. God showed him more ways of what he wanted him to do, gave him more responsibilities, and God even gave him special friends who were wise and brave and helped him to grow. And the same can be for us. God has got a special purpose for every single person's life. And you're not going to have that purpose or plan all unfolded for you in one day. You're going to grow slowly, slowly into the person God wants you to be. So take your time to listen to him and to learn from him. And be careful to make wise and brave friends. Should we pray? Yes. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you that you had a purpose and a plan for David. And that you used each of the experiences in his life to grow him to be more and more and more like you. And like the person you wanted him to be. Jesus, help us to be patient as we grow. And help us to listen to your voice and to grow more like you in everything we do. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope to see you next week. God's story, David and Goliath. So part of God's story is about the time David fought Goliath. And it begins like this. David was the youngest of eight brothers. His job was being a shepherd, which meant he spent all day in a field watching sheep eat and roll around the grass. Meanwhile, some of his brothers were off with the Israeli army preparing for war against the Philistines. The Philistines were one of the toughest armies the people of Israel had to fight. So one day, David was taking food to his brothers because his dad asked him to. But when he got there, his brothers accused him of coming so he could watch the fight instead of the sheep. Since David knew in his heart he was just obeying his dad, he didn't mind being misunderstood. Anyway, while David was there, he saw a huge Philistine man, more than nine feet tall, step onto the field between the two armies. He was wearing a thick helmet and armor and carrying huge weapons. His name was Goliath, and he was definitely used to being the winner. David found out that Goliath had been stepping onto the field like this every morning for the past 40 days and saying, Give me a man and let us fight each other. But nobody from Israel was brave enough to fight him, even the king. Well, David didn't like that this giant was intimidating the Israelites. After all, they were God's special family. And because God was with the Israelites, they could have courage in any situation. So David, who wasn't even a soldier, told the king, I'll fight against him. Now, the king thought David was too small, but he really wanted someone to fight Goliath. So he gave in. And David knew he wasn't strong enough to beat Goliath by himself, but he believed God would be with him. So he said, the Lord will rescue me from the hand of this Philistine. The king hoped David was right, he even had his own weapons and armor put on David, but they didn't fit him. David decided to go into battle in his regular clothes. That's how sure he was that God would help him. Anyway, David went to a nearby stream and chose five smooth stones to use with his slingshot. Then he walked onto the battlefield to meet the massive Goliath. When Goliath saw how wimpy David looked, he was furious. He thought he'd get to fight the Israelite's strongest warrior. He said to David, Am I a dog that you come at me with sticks? I'll give your flesh to the birds and wild animals. David might have looked like a wimp, but he was actually really brave. In fact, he was so brave that when he was taking care of sheep, he fought off bears and lions. Because God helped him protect his sheep, 
David knew God would help him protect this special family. David said, you come at me with a sword, but I come at you with the name of the Lord Almighty. He was explaining to Goliath that God was more powerful than anything. He also added that he would feed Goliath's flesh to the birds, which made the giant even more mad. Then David took a stone, put it in the slingshot, and slung it at Goliath. Goliath didn't even get a chance to swing a sword because the stone hit him right in the forehead and sunk in deep. He face planted straight into the ground. Nobody could believe it. Then David ran over, took hold of the giant's sword, and drew it from the sheath. He took the sword and cut off Goliath's head. David carried the head all the way back to Jerusalem. And when the Philistine army realized Goliath was dead, they started running away like a bunch of scaredy cats. The Israelites chased the Philistines, shouting loudly. They had won. God used David, who was just an average kid, to rescue his people. And that's the story of David and Goliath. So, in case you missed it, here's the quick version. David was a shepherd. He brought his brother's lunch. He saw Goliath. Goliath scared everybody. David wasn't scared. He knew God was stronger. David fought Goliath. He used one stone. God helped him kill Goliath. The Israelites won. God's people were saved. And that's a part of God's story.